Hi, fourth grade. It's good to see you. I'm coming here to teach to you today from huh, my car. I'm sitting at a park. I had to go out for a drive today. I was getting a little bit um, ah, cooped up in my home and I actually just wanted to go outside and um, just get a little change of scenery. And I was going to go out and teach on a picnic table at a park here, but it's too chilly, so I'm just going to teach inside my car. Who would have ever thought in a million years I would be teaching a school lesson from inside of my vehicle? But these are these are strange days, aren't they? So here we go. Um, I hope that you understood everything from your lesson. We're going to talk first about subtraction of fractions with borrowing. I'm going to give you the answer key to the math lesson from yesterday, and I'm going to take a picture of that, and you can attach it and upload it, okay? And then we're going to go to page 163 just so that you can check your answers from yesterday. But then we're going to go to page 163, subtraction of fractions with borrowing, and we're going to talk about here borrowing from a whole number. I'm sorry my nose is so itchy. I think it's allergy season coming on me here. Um, so it may be necessary to borrow from the whole number in the menu end before the subtraction can be subtracted. So if you look in the answer key here where you see the example, you'll notice there's a whole number one with um, a slash over it, which means we've borrowed from it and now we have a zero. And so we've borrowed from it, we've written down a zero, and then to represent that whole number, we've now turned it into a fraction. And we've chosen four over four because we're wanting to choose a fraction with a common denominator of three fourths. So then when you get to your answer here, it's four fourths minus three fourths equals one fourth. And you can kind of see that represented on the number line as well. Um, but that kind of gets into um, borrowing from the whole number, okay? And then turning that into a fraction that has a common denominator so that you could subtract. So we're gonna work on the class practice today. I think section one is really easy. You'll have no problem with that. I like how this scaffolds down because for number two, you'll see that you um, actually have the answer at the top for the first two. So you borrow from the one, you get zero, and then you would choose three thirds thirds to subtract from two to subtract two thirds from because you need to have the whole number that would have the same common denominator the fraction to represent the whole number so you could have the same common denominator so it would be three thirds minus two thirds right for the next one you have zero and you're subtracting four fifths so you would choose five fifths to represent the whole number so that you could then subtract five fifths minus four fifths then for C and D there, it still provides the zero, but then you're going to need to choose what fraction you should write down to represent the whole number so that it has the same common denominator using the fraction that you're trying to subtract, okay? So I hope that part makes sense to you. And then if you go at the bottom, you'll notice that the zero isn't provided and you just have the one there. And so you'll need to cross out your one and borrow, put your zero up at the top all on your own, and then choose the correct fraction that you need, okay? So like you would choose, um, for example, one, you would cross out the one for 3a, you would put a zero at the top, and you would choose five-fifths as your fraction to represent the whole number because you're subtracting three-fifths, and you want the de common denominators to be the same, okay? So then you would subtract five-fifths minus three-fifths to get two-fifths. So I hope that makes sense to you. I liked the way that it kind of scaffolded and brought you kind of through the lesson a little bit, all right? Um, and if you have any problems with that, I'll check in with you about that tomorrow, all right? Remember, you can always push pause on this lesson whenever you want, all right? If you need to stop and just take a break or get another book or sharpen a pencil, get a glass of water, whatever you need to do, okay? We're gonna go on next here to possessive pronouns. We talked about this a little bit yesterday. Remember, pronouns take the place of a noun and possessive nouns have an apostrophe S, right? Like the dog's bone, D-O-G-S isn't plural there. You would have an apostrophe. The apostrophe S shows ownership of the bone, right? Well, the same thing in pronouns, right? When we have a pronoun, um, we can also have pronouns that show ownership of something. But instead of putting an apostrophe S with them, the word actually changes. So that's kind of what we got into a little bit yesterday, and I want to go over our answers for think A. So we did one and two together. Your answers were actually her and her. 
together. And then for number three, let's just go through this together before I move you on to the next page. So for number three, Mr. Houck is the children's teacher. So when you talk about the children, which is underlined, if you were to be talking about, oh, the children over there, they are running, right? So they would represent them, uh, the pronoun for the children, right? But the, they doesn't make sense in the sentence. So you wouldn't say Mr. Hauk is they teacher, all right? You would say Mr. Hauk is their teacher. For number four, I will clean the rabbit's cage. We know that if we don't know if an animal is a boy or a girl, that we refer to it as an it. And we wouldn't say I will clean it cage, right? We want the, the possessive form of that. Um, whose cage is it? It's its cage. And just I-T-S, no apostrophe, because remember, if it was I-T apostrophe S, then it would be a contraction, meaning it is. All right. Number five, we are going out west during my family's vacation. So my family's is the subject, is the now, or not the subject, I'm sorry, is the now that we're trying to, um, find a pronoun for. And when we talk about, you know, my family, right? We would say, oh, this is my family, we, right? But that doesn't make sense in the sentence. We are going out west during we vacation? No, we would say our. So that would be the possessive form. Number six, guests are always welcome at Mrs. Woodle's home, right? So Mrs. Woodle is a he and the possessive form would be her. Elisha received Elijah's mantle. Elijah is a he, right? And we're not going to say Elisha received he's mantle. We're going to say Elisha received his. My father and I rode in the fisherman's bath in the fisherman's boat. Um, the fisherman is a he, possessive form is his, right? Because he wouldn't make sense in that sentence. A fly became tangled in the spider's web. Again, the spider is an insect, so it's an it, and the possessive form would be it. And then the gospel was made clear in Peter's sermon. So notice there for the noun, Peter is an apostrophe S, but we can't do that with a pronoun. So we wouldn't say he, we would say his. Whose sermon is it? It's his sermon. All right, so I hope that was helpful. Again, you can always email if you, me if you have questions. And I want to go over and let you know I'm going to assign page 159, Think B and Think C for your work today. You're going to do the same thing that you did in Think A yesterday for Think B. You're going to just change the form of the pronoun to make it fit in the complete sentence, right? And then for Think C, we're going to go get back to, remember when we would write our sentences on the board and draw the line between the subject and the predicate? right? Uh, that's part of what I want you to be thinking about today because this is actually a three-part direction. So it says underline all of the pronouns in the following sentence, circle the possessive pronouns, box the pronouns used as subjects, all right? So you're going to go ahead and you're going to underline all of the pronouns, all right? All of the pronouns that take a place the place of a noun, right? You're going to circle the possessive pronouns and you can use your guide on the previous page, all right? And then you're going to put a box around pronouns that are used at the subject, right? So the subject says what the sentence is about, all right? So I'm gonna give you a hint. There are two sentences that have pronouns that are the subject of the sentence. There are two sentences that have pronouns that are the subject of the sentence, all right? Um, yeah, I think that's all the help that I'm gonna give you for that. So take your time with that. Email me if you have any questions. Again, we'll go over this answer tomorrow. I just want you to give it a try today. I hope you're singing your New Testament Bible song. I hope I get to hear from some of you soon about that. Excited to hear if anybody's singing it. And um, I just also thought maybe today, as you, you've been working through your lesson today about making wise choices, I just thought maybe we could just end in prayer today and um, just go to God um, and just pray together. All right? Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for this day. Um, we thank you that we can come together, even right now with a video. I just pray for all of our families, God. I pray for all of my students, and I just pray for um, your joy right now in our families, God. I pray for your patience, God, as we are all 
um, just living together and things are just so different right now, God, but we know that you're not different and we know that you never change even though our circumstances do and we're so thankful for that. So help us to look to you, God, um, in this season, um, knowing that you are our hope, um, that you go before us, that you surround us on every side, God, um, that you give us your promises that you will never leave us and that you will never forsake us, um, that, that through Christ, um, we, we just have everything that we need. So help us to just rest in that today and maybe even on the hard days where we're getting a little crazy and we feel like we just need to get out of the house, God. We know that um, you understand all that and we can go to you about that anytime. So um, I just thank you for our families and for our school, Lord. Just continue to be with us, God, and just help us to be a light in our circumstances and to glorify and honor you in all that we say and do. Um, in Jesus' name, amen.